one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 273 of the podcast here on the In30 Network. My name is Hi. I'm Thomas right through the screen. Hi. Like directly through. Like I'm I'm just on so, the other oh, side. I'm just crouched. Correct. So so the news is a little short this week. So we want to present an idea. An idea that we want to do moving forward, not every week, but just an idea. So so I'm gonna start teaching a security course to my high school students. And it follows this, uh, the security plus uh, testing, whatever they want to call it, the curriculum. And I and I, I proposed this to Tom a few weeks ago, and I said, why don't why don't we cover the topics here in the security podcast uh, while we do it? Because we have we do have off weeks. Like we didn't record last week. We had trouble finding things for this week, and we said, you know what? Why don't we we can we can make this a playlist on YouTube. Um, so you can follow it. And as we do these episodes, we'll, we'll put them on because I mean, literally in the last two weeks, it was cryptocurrency, 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 not, uh, uh, and ransomware and ransomware and ransomware, none of which we can do anything about. So we said, so, and DEF CON is as we talk, and I'm not trying to put dates in here, but DEF CON is starting literally tomorrow when you're hearing this. So we're not going to hear a lot of news. So those dead periods. So after, so after DEF CON is going to be uh, busy, but like around Thanksgiving, around Christmas, we can do one or two episodes there and, and to put them in a playlist form that you can follow. And if you like it, it's, it's there for you. So, so the episode we wanted to talk about to start with tonight is is how to break into the security industry or to IT in general. If if you want to make a career change, so you've been following us and you're like, hmm, they talk about this, I can do it. How do you break in? And and, and I'm going to defer to Tom on a lot of this, but I think we have we can make a good 30 minutes on what to do. So the the perspective, just so you're all aware of the context, right? I, I started out uh, my IT career in the trenches of IT support. I worked a help desk, I answered phones, I did chats, um, and I learned a whole lot, um, but mostly about people and users in general and not, not so much technology. Um, it was still educational, it was still helpful to go through the trenches, but ultimately your job in technology is not necessarily to work with technology, right? Like that's, it's a nice side benefit, but generally your job is going to be people and how you can help people in their intersection with that technology, right? So the things I learned isn't necessarily, oh yeah, Word generally makes auto saves and they're in this location. Cool, that's good to know. But the thing I really learned was how to deal with people when they've just lost a term paper that they didn't save somewhere. You need to go fish around to find backups or how to deal with a user that doesn't understand that wireless generally res refers to Wi-Fi and it doesn't refer to the fact that you never need to plug the thing in, uh, right? So your career in tech, whether you're a programmer, a developer, a security person, is all going to be about people. It's the intersection of people and technology and how you can bridge that gap. So if you're sitting, like, I mean, so we're all sitting doing our jobs and Think about your job. You're learning how to do your job very well. And now the problem is you use computers or whatever as a tool, the Wi-Fi, the network, and saving things. So you've come up with these, these things. The person in IT doesn't know how to solve your problem. They're looking it up. Their job is to find out what your problem is, and that's the communication part of it. So a lot of what we're talking about, none of this, I, I, I don't want to get too far ahead, but I don't think it's that hard. I don't think it's this monumental thing like, like becoming a doctor or a lawyer or a civil engineer or whatever it is where you have to go back to school and everything. There are some stuff. I think it's just figuring out how to solve problems because for whatever reason, computers are these things that people think they know how to use, but unfortunately they really don't. So if you know how to use it slightly better, you become that friend that everyone comes to. Well, imagine if you can leverage that into a career, like literally leverage that into a high paying job career where, where if you just do a little more technical expertise, you can make a lot of money. So to, to give a little bit more background on me, which I probably yeah. shouldn't do for various legal reasons. Um, I started out my, uh, my IT career um, by hacking my high school getting expelled for it, uh, getting on the news in my small little 
uh, farm town community surrounded by cornfields. Uh, and then people paid me to fix their computers. And I decided to turn that into college and then a help desk job. And then the rest is kind of history. Um, but generally people will use computers or their technology as just rough tools, right? Now, if you're swinging a hammer, you're hitting nails, everything's working great, and your hammer turns a bright blue color with an error screen on it, you'd be very confused. I'd be very confused. I don't know any hammers that blue screen. And generally, that's how people think about their technology, right? It's going to work exactly how they expect if they understand, if they, like, are used to the way it operates when it's functioning normally. But as soon as it goes outside of those bounds, they're lost, right? They, they had a workflow, and then it was interrupted with this thing that's now unknown, right? It could be an error message. It could be an update that changed where buttons are. It could be just a new operating system, right? Going from, uh, going from Windows XP to, to Windows 7, right? There's a lot of changes there. Going to Windows 8, that's a totally different environment for most people. Um, and your job in tech is to figure out how to not only solve those problems, but educate people, right? Uh, if you've got a, a, a kid who wants a bowl of cereal, right? Depending on their age, you'll either just make them cereal or show them how. But you don't want to have a 30-year-old kid in your house who's like, Dad, I need cereal. And you're making cereal for a 30-year-old, right? At some point in their development, you're going to teach them, okay, put in the cereal first and then the milk, because that's the only way you make cereal. If you put the milk in first, you're a monster. Just flat out. I, I, I agree with that. Well, I mean, you're right. So we all transition to remote learning for those with kids or in life. And we we figured out we ha we all had to learn Zoom. We all had to call people. We all had to listen on the phone. We all had to deal with this. And and the people who succeeded in this were the ones who who listened and thought about this. There was nothing hard there. Half of IT's job in the last eighteen months was teaching people how to use Zoom. And for you to do that, that's not I I, I don't find that challenging. I mean, to say hey, if you just think about what you're doing and how to do it. It's we're just trying to say. Um, it's not that hard to break in if that's what you want to do. And so I, I, I think we should start talking about what can you do or the best ways to learn. And and we're, we're saying this, this is something you can probably do, get an intro job in probably less than a year. So if you're saying, hey, while you, you're doing your normal job, like, like at night and everything else. So I'm going to let st Tom start with, with it. Yeah, so if, if you're looking to do like an intro job, especially something like a help desk or Geek Squad or, or any of those places where it, basically your job is solving what are considered to be low level tech problems for normal people, really run of the mill stuff, right? Broken hardware, error messages, operating system installs, you know, the kind of the, the what's what of your like top 10 most common IT problems that people run into. Um, the, the first thing you have to do is rule zero, just be curious. That's it, right? Like if, if you're in an application, like I've, I literally did this for a career that you have never seen before, ever. And colleges have a whole lot of weird applications that people use for research, number crunching, scientific analysis, what have you. I, I don't know any of them, right? Like I knew the Microsoft Office suite and some system utilities and that's about it. Um, but if somebody comes to you with a question, you know, what's the first thing you do? How do you start to solve this? For me, it was literally going up to the, the menu bar, clicking on file, and then just mousing over each of the menu items to figure out, okay, what's, where does this sound like a menu option that's going to give me what I need? Like, maybe it's in options or preferences somewhere. Like, just click around and look at stuff, first of all. Um, if it's something like an error message where you really don't understand it, and especially if you don't have context of the program uh, or the, the hardware device even, right? You, you go, you type in iPhone, the number, and then the error message that's on the screen. You type that into Google, and chances are you're going to get a pile of links of people with the same problem or how to solve the problem or maybe a help article from Apple's site, um, right? So rule zero, be curious. Rule one, just Google it. Uh, like even even today, I am a professional software developer. That is my job title. Um, you know what I do for about half the day? I, I'm not just sitting there like writing code from memory. I'm I'm researching, which is a fancy word for I'm, I'm just googling 
the heck out of everything. <laughs> like, okay, how does this library work? What's the best way to do this in-memory cache? Do I really need to handwrite a linked list for this? And by the way, the answer is always no. Um, like, there's... You just you just be curious and Google, and that's that's literally your first step in solving problems. And you can even practice and play along at home, right? Uh, ask your your brother, sister, mother, father, grandchild. Are you having computer problems? If they say yes, you now have a problem to solve, right? And there might not be a solution offhand, especially if it's a hardware problem, but you can get closer to an answer. And that's your only objective is to to figure out what's close to an answer what's approximate right you might not hit home runs every time but at least if you're making contact you're getting somewhere so i was going to start off with that first the, the, i i don't rule zero you're right i think the next thing is find find problems to solve or find problems or solutions to problems that don't exist all of those work uh, start going on the internet, start expanding your, your horizons, figure out what Snapchat is or whatever apps you want. Um, biggest problem I hear, and you, you said, this is something's wrong with my internet, try and diagnose. And that's a little hard, but try and diagnose those problems. It's usually like unplugging the router and plugging it in. I mean, that that's usually a, a, a case to solve a lot of things. Um, people hate turning off their computer and turning it back on. So you'd be surprised how many times that actually works, but start figuring out those projects at work. How do you know, I mean, here you have your job, try and use the computer to make your life easier. Um, just because you're using Excel or whatever it is, maybe you learn a little Python to do something else. Uh, maybe you find a, a different way to do something. Just these little projects to make your time go faster. First, that would probably get you a promotion, whatever you're doing. And second, it starts that rabbit hole of going somewhere else. So figure out what problems you're trying to solve. And I mean, you've heard me say this on the show for years. I started with with uh, network attached storage. We talk about backups. I talked about we re networked my house. These are all little things that I'm doing to to make it better. And I mean, yeah, I spent some money, but it's essentially just playing with the settings. And like you said, what does this setting do? It breaks something. Okay, I try to ba I try to redo it, but I Google the answer and we move on from there. So. So try to find some problems that, that you can help people with. And like you said, it may not, you may not solve the problem, but usually it's, how do I do something on my iPhone? Start becoming the per, well, I don't want to say start becoming the person that everyone wants to come to because you may not want that, but, but yes, start solving the problems that people are asking and, and y you'll see how far, or I always tell people spend 45 minutes learning your phone. And I dare I say, sit, just sit, sit for a few minutes every day. If you spend 45 minutes digging around and, and setting up settings, you'll be, it, you'll make your life easier. How many people have their phone, the phone icon in the lower left-hand corner? They never changed it. If you don't call people on the phone, why do you put it there? Like that's very important screen real estate, but little things like that make your life better. You can see how technology does it and you can move forward from there. I do. I never call anyone, but it's in the lower left corner. I even changed it. It's not phone. It's Google Voice. But why do I do that? I have no idea. So along with be curious, um, you need to, for, for every problem and, and every solution that you're interested in, run a thorough professional root cause analysis on the problem. Now, that's just a fancy way of just saying, ask why, like 20,000 times, right? Act like that annoying toddler that you can't get away from, right? Either your kid or your cousin or whoever it is, asking why to everything. And every time you answer, you just get another why back. When you're trying to be curious, when you're trying to learn about technology, just asking, why is this? Why, why did this error pop up? Why does it work this way? Why on earth is this this program's workflow? That seems awful, because I want to do this other thing. If you just keep asking why a lot, eventually you'll get down to the root cause, which can be as simple as, oh, wow, I had a fundamental misunderstanding of how this worked, which, like, you know, I'll be completely honest, I do that all the time. All the time. I will run into things where I think it works like everything else kind of does. Like, the, most tech falls into this usability pattern where people build things and use things in generally the same way but there might be one product that's just completely out there for very good reasons that i just didn't understand 
Um, or maybe maybe you didn't know that there was a feature here or that the systems interacted and intersected in this really odd way that's causing a problem. Just asking why can get you really far. And depending on how crazy you want to get, you can get expert level knowledge out of just asking why a whole lot. And this mostly comes down to the open source world, right? Like, hey, you have a Raspberry Pi running Linux. Okay, well, I hit this problem where it's not working in this way. Why? You can actually, with open source systems, you can go to the code. You can go to, like, the basis level of what this thing is doing, how it's running, and how it was intended to work, and get that understanding. Now, I'm, I'm not expecting you to go from, like, level zero help desk tech to Linux kernel developer overnight, but what I'm saying is once you get used to asking why, once you get used to pounding the pavement, figuring out those facts, and essentially being a tech detective, you can gain enough skill to look at some Linux kernel code and go, this is it. Right here is why I'm running into this problem. I either need to do this, or there's a clear bug here that needs to be fixed. And that's literally what I do each and every day, is I solve tiny problems that eventually, after solving enough problems, I've created a giant working system. Um, with still a lot of problems. I'm a programmer, after all. Bugs are kind of what I do. Well, I want to add to that. As you solve the problems, either remember them or write them down because, and, and I, we're all guilty of this, especially when installing packages with homebrew where something breaks, like I want to update my website, which I haven't done in forever. Now I have to ask Tom, what's the, what's the async command to delete everything and do it? Because like like everyone else, I hit up on my terminal command until I find it. The problem is it's been too far. But no, start writing down the answers to this. Like start asking your coworkers, hey, uh, what problems do you have? Try to research them, try to solve them. Because if you if that person has it or you have it, so do a lot of other people. And if you have I mean, maybe this is a great idea. We we're talking about little projects. Have a little WordPress blog or I don't know, a Twitter thing where you just type out the answers to the problems. Just and and post them somewhere because we're going to talk about projects and everything else. Just start posting them somewhere. You're going to learn two things. One, 95% of the problems are all the same. Uh that's or takeaway one, two. All the problems have sort of the same solution. And, or they're so one-off that everyone has it and somebody tells you that's not how you think and you have to change it. Uh, the, so those are the really the big things. And if you start writing them down, you gain all that knowledge and you start learning, hmm, how do I do this? How do I do this? But fundamentally, computer scientists, they're very structured. So if it's one way, it's probably the same way all the way through. So as soon as you can come around to that way of thinking, you're going to, you're going to, you're, everything's going to start speeding up much faster in trying to solve other things. Uh, basically, what you're doing is learning how to learn. And uh, computer science, and, and let's, let's get this out of the way. There is very little science happening in computer science. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's art. It's computer yep. art is really all it is. Um, like when, I, when I'm programming a system, I'm not following a, a rigorous scientific method of proving and unproving certain theorems and optimizing the best way to do something. I, I'm literally just, I've got a bunch of two by fours, a bunch of nails and a bunch of hammers. And I'm trying to figure out in what order do I set these things up and in what order do I swing the hammers and which hammers do I even use to make a thing that works. And if it works, generally it's good enough for what I'm doing. Um, but you're, you're basically learning how to learn. Now, to, to go back to running a website or a blog or just writing down your answers, do it. Uh, this, is, this is one thing that honestly has made a major impact in my career because every time I solved a problem, that wasn't like company proprietary, right? It wasn't secret. It was like, oh, hey, how am I going to write a script to unlock AD accounts if something bad happens and they all get locked? It's happened, uh, right? I wrote that script. I, I documented it. I put it on my blog and I said, hey, here's, here's how I ran into this problem. Here's how I solved it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be an expert, right? Like people are going to ridicule you if you do something stupid, but it's the internet. That's what happens. Like just turn off comments and don't even worry. Um, but what I did over, over years, I just built up basically this knowledge base on my blog of here's a weird problem. Here's how I solved it. Eventually, somebody called me and said, hey, I read your blog. Do you want to come in for an interview? 
I, and like it's it's weird that doesn't happen that's not normal but on the off chance that it could work for you you got nothing to lose except writing a blog post and uh and helping yourself remember stuff and it's honestly helped me too when i've encountered issues i've i've thought for a second like wow i i remember i ran into this issue before like three or four years ago and i go to my blog i i search like on google of like at samurailink3.com oh my god it's right there like i literally have a walkthrough for the exact problem i'm experiencing again because i took the time to write it down super helpful it doesn't even have to be a blog like, you, you could have a personal wiki or a folder full of word documents like whatever helps you just get it documented somewhere where you can get it. i like the the idea of a website only because like you said somebody randomly cold calls you so you could say hey you have experience with websites because I mean, some company may may ask you, "Hey, can you monitor our WordPress installation?" I mean, I mean, WordPress is very simple. If you've never done it before. It is really, really simple, and it's very extensible. So you could become an ex. I don't want to say an expert there, but you could become competent enough to do something. And especially when it comes to networking or whatever else. Um, the other thing I, you can I, do. With with that website is um, if you have a common problem amongst like team members, uh, to give an example, I had to teach a whole bunch of people Git basically overnight. So we went from no version control to I introduced version control at a company I work. I had to teach like 10 people how to use Git. So I wrote a tutorial. I made basically a giant list of links on my blog that says, here's the very best Git resources. Here's the order you want to run through them. And here's the things you need to consider when doing this training. And I just shipped it to everyone. It, it's not perfect, right? Some people just didn't learn that way and they needed a little bit more handholding. But for some, they just took the information and ran with it. So it can honestly make your life easier in some way. And, and again, that's when, when somebody's introducing a new project, our school introduced canvas again, it's a learning management system. It it's, it's simple. It just has so many features and no one knows where everything is. So I learned it first because it was that simple. It, again, as you start with the different projects, you learn that they're all the same. Uh, and, and you try to find use cases. Somebody doesn't want to be told to change what they're doing because it benefits you. Like, oh, if we all went to Google docs, it makes me using a Chromebook better. People don't want to hear that. They want to hear why it's better for them. So when you phrase answers or you solve problems, why is it better for them? Oh, it's searchable. You can, you, it's everywhere. It auto saves, like things like auto save also helps. Uh, you can share with people, you can show them all different things like that you can that's how you do that selling of of whatever technology it is and people will have more buy-in it's we talk about this what, what get your family on signal or whatsapp get them off sms uh and and you find out that people don't want to move because it doesn't help them sms works so i'm going to use it well if you try to explain to them well uh signal is better because it's secure then you run into the problems of well i don't really care about the security and that's what you're trying to overcome. So, so if you're just trying to get into IT, you're going to sit like level zero, you're going to sit behind the desk and you're going to be answering calls. Uh, why is it my printer not working or whatever else? You want to start stepping up into the next thing. We started security podcast, so we're going to go into maybe security is the option because literally people don't really care about security enough. So they want someone else to handle it. They don't want to deal with it. So that leaves open a huge amount of jobs, like real good paying jobs if you can learn the computer security and trust me it is not as hard as you think so becoming level zero level one it person is not that hard moving up through the ranks you do that for a year or two and you focus on security it becomes a lot it's not that hard and now you're in rarefied air where there's not too many people yeah like everybody thinks oh computer security you must be an expert hacker and yeah, there are lots of expert hackers. There, there are people who literally their job title is, you know, senior penetration tester, where their job is to break into companies uh, and then like do a bunch of fun stuff by grabbing all the companies like secrets and get access to all their systems. And look, I've rooted everything. But honestly, that's a very small part of penetration testers job. Their, their main job is people, is communication. They're, they spend more time generally, generally. They spend more time 
writing reports about what they did to break in and the deficiencies with the company systems than they do actually breaking in. Um, right? Like, I, I, I've heard pen testers say, oh, no, 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 I, I'm not a hacker. I write reports for a living. I do hacking on the side, uh, which is honestly fairly well, I accurate. love that idea. So I want to bounce off that idea. So I, I've been watching, I've been hearing a lot more about that. Like, the, the pen testers hate writing reports. If you can write reports, if your job is to, you're a good community, you can write reports. There you go. There's your training. You can take this and you can, and you learn the lingo quickly. I mean, they're giving you the answers on how to do this. You are learning on the spot. All you got to do is type the report up, which at the end of the day, it's almost, it's probably cut, cut and paste from a lot once you have a whole sample. So a good pen test firm probably has hundreds and thousands of reports for just copying and pasting. If you can do that, that solves the problem. That's that being curious on how to make it faster. There, there's lots of open yes. source projects, uh, including uh, Signal, and I know TrueCrypt for a while had some stuff up there. I believe Veracrypt has uh, reports written today. Uh, basically, tech audits, right, where a security firm will analyze everything from the code to the build systems to the web stack to, you know, write a report and say, yes, this is known good security software, or here are these issues that the company is working on fixing. Um, and a lot of open source tech will put out public audit reports. If you want to see a good report, or at least uh, a lot of common reports, you can look at open source security software and look for security audits. Just read through that, how they're written, how they're put together. Uh, if you want some practice, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people demonstrating exploits on like old versions of Windows or unpatched software. Watch them hack something, and while you're watching, take notes and then try to build a report out of those notes. Because if you want to be a professional hacker, that's the stuff you're going to do. That's what earns you the money, right? The hacking, cool, right? Like you might show off in an interview. It might feel really cool. And trust me, I've broken into systems. It's a lot of fun. Don't do it illegally. Only break into systems that you own or have been given explicit access to hack, like capture the flag, um, which is literally a gamified way of hacking. Um, but yeah. writing reports, that's honestly the job. That's what you do. Uh, and just in tech, right? Like I'm a programmer, but a lot of my success is directly attributed to the way I write and communicate with people. If you can be an effective communicator, you can work just about anywhere. Uh, because the, um, the old stereotype about the basement dwelling, dwelling nerds that can't really talk to people... I, I hate to say, but it, that is a stereotype for a reason. There's a lot of nerds out there. Not everybody, of course, but there's a lot of computer people out there that just aren't great communicators. If you can get the communication down and the tech, you can't be stopped. I would say focus more on the communication. You'll learn the tech. So, and then the, the last thing we want to end up is, is I was, I was talking to somebody you see on the side of the road, at least in, on the New Jersey Turnpike, uh, this college or this for-profit, I want to I want to clarify that for-profit college, computer tech, eighty thousand, starting eighty thousand dollars, take a, whatever course it is. What they're doing is they're just packaging up something and then they're slapping their name and their tuition on it. So to, I know Tom's not a big person into certifications. Uh, I I am not either for the most part, but. The certifications in, in these industries do matter for certain people to break in. It's that breaking in. Go to those websites. They, they'll sell you the training software. Like I just saw Sec Plus, $600. $600, they'll basically teach you everything you need to know. And then, and then hopefully you pass it on the first or second time because they give you a retest. See what they're doing? They're, they're getting you through there. And... And just go get some books from the library. Go listen. Like you're listening to this podcast. Somebody said, somebody told me, and that may have been Tom, the stuff that we talk about the podcast is good enough. So if you've been following what we've been talking about, you are probably good enough for some of these intro certification exams. Don't feel that imposter syndrome that you are not good enough because you didn't hack anything. So if you want to see what, what the level is, start looking at those very intro exams or certifications and you'd be surprised, like we said, how much, how not difficult that entry level that you need to know is. And from there you build up, you get that first job. Once you get that first job, you're in 
and then you can see what else you want to do by doing that other job. It's uh, it's just getting there, and don't think that you don't know enough. If you if you've been listening to this show, you are probably good enough. So so let me let me put it this way: I, I have been doing uh, I've been in this career for a long, relative right. Like I'm I'm not an old Unix graybeard or anything, but I'm I'm getting there. Um, I can look at code that I wrote three months ago, six months ago, especially a year ago, and absolutely hate the person that wrote that code. Like, what is this evil, vile person thinking writing something like this? Like, this is inefficient, it's inelegant, what, this is just, it's a glorified hack, this is awful. Who wrote this? I go to the commit log, oh, it's me. Wow, I am just awful. So, like, even even somebody who I consider to... I, I consider myself, you know, a professional. I've been doing this for a while. I generally know how things work. Uh, but I, I'm still in a continual process of learning and growing. And the code that I, I wrote even three months ago is abhorrent to me just because there's this constant leveling up process. When, when you get going, when you really immerse yourself in this landscape, once you get rolling, there's not much that'll stop you. Um, you're, you're going to continually reinvent and know, and, you know, on imposter syndrome, I still have imposter syndrome today. Like I, I am a, a senior, uh, in, in my company. Uh, I, I worked really hard to get there. And on one hand, yeah, I feel like I, I earned it. I deserve it. On the other hand, look at all these people who are at my level that are way, way better than I am. Uh, and yeah, I feel it too. So don't listen to that voice. Everybody's got it. Uh, just squash it down. Just squash it down. Like the, the best of emotions. <laughs> so with that said, we are over time. And we just want to leave you with this. If, you're, if you want more, you want more help, you want anything, we have a signal group. There's your first homework assignment. Join our signal group. Okay, find us on Twitter. You can uh, tweet the show at in30, I-N-T-H-I-R-T-Y. I think I spelled that right. It's all one word spelled out correctly. In At in30, I will send you a signal invitation. You can join the signal group. You don't know what signal is? That's your first thing. That's our encrypted messaging platform that's open source that we use. And you can ask. We don't know who's in there. There's a whole bunch of different people who have whole different level of expertise in everything. And we can guide you on the next steps. So let that be your first homework assignment. Come join us. Talk to us. We'll guide you through the next steps and go from there. So with that said, we are over time. I hope, I hope this was enjoyable for you and we will see everyone. Hopefully next, we'll see everyone next week, but hopefully we do another one of these shows sooner than later and we will see everyone on that time. So have a good night, everyone. Bye. See ya. 73.